Hey everyone, this amazing ESO Network show is brought to you by our fine sponsor, Amazon.com. Please remember to shop Amazon for all your geeky needs, no matter what time of the year it is. All you need to do is go to ESOPodcast.com slash ESO Amazon. Or click on the Amazon banner on the ESO Network webpage to go to our e-store. It's the best way to shop and the best way to support this program, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, that's enough of me babbling for now. Now on with your regular scheduled show. Are you ready to rock? This is where the world of pop culture and talk collide. Hey, how you doing, kid? This is the Adam and JP Show. It's the Adam and JP show for now. Yeah, for now. I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. I almost thought you said Fernando as if you're speaking to Fernando out there. I'm sure there's a Fernando that listens. Hey, Fernando. Hey, Fernando. It's the Adam and JP show. Do you know us? Thanks for listening, Fernie. Uh, That's such- a good nickname for Fernando, right? Yeah. Fernie? I would call If I knew anyone named Fernando, it would be Fern. Nandy? Nee. Nandy. Hmm. Andy. We can get Andy out of it. Oh, Nandy. <laughs> How about Andy? You came and you gave and you gave. Uh, Hey. Yeah. Uh, on today's show, mm-hmm. brought to you by Outer Limits Comets in Franklin, Tennessee, or Outer Limits Comics, eh. if you want to fully say the word. <laughs> Comets are fun, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to reveal to you just how dumb I really am. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, last week, Adam, we yeah. uh, we sat down, as we normally do. Yeah. We sat around the microphones. You're going to tell the full story, huh? The old audio campfire. Because people may be wondering right now, hey, what happened to that football episode? It's been a whole week, guys. Where have you been? Oh, we're doing two episodes a week. You can count on us. We won't let you down. <laughs> yeah, I let you down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we had a fantastic time last week. Right, it was good. We, we did the show about Groundhog Day. G- great feedback on mm. that show. And then Tuesday, we were set to this past Tuesday, mm. January 30th, 2017. <laughs> you remember clearly. We were set to release the other episode that we recorded that day. Football movies for people who hate football. I think it was January 30th, right? January 30th. Isn't that what I said? I think you said 23rd. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. Hey, just put it on the list of things (laughs) I've screwed up this week. So uh, Monday night, Uh uh, I pull up the old computer file. (laughs) I I fire up the Adam and JP editing machine. (laughs) And uh, what do you want to You edit the thing on a typewriter? I do. It takes a long time. <laughs> ding! The ding. That's what I was missing. Uh, and I pull up the file where I had saved our football conversation, mm-hmm. our Super Bowl talk, if you will. And uh, it was the Monday show or yeah. the Friday show. Yeah. Last Friday show. I, I I saved that file under two names. It happens. So uh, it was erased from existence. So... We have a redo. We're going to do it again. If football had a mulligan, we would be doing that right now. That's true. It's a do-over. Uh, this is like the two-point conversion. Yeah, yeah. This is the deflate gate of podcasting right here. Uh, so coming up, <laughs> we are going to chat about football movies for people who hate football. And it's even closer to the Super Bowl this way. That's true. Think of it as a hidden treat. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And we should we didn't do it a lot on the last episode that won't ever be heard. We should give our uh, Super Bowl predictions. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Falcons by oh, 10. What? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. I think Patriots by 17. No way. I'm feeling like mm-hmm. a... Nope. I feel like a... Uh, yeah. Like a 34-17, like a 31-14 kind of thing. Hey, do you remember the Giants when the Giants were in the Super Bowl a couple uh, of years ago? It's old times. Nah. I'm telling you. <laughs> Mark it down. For the Falcons, man. Come take, on. Take it to Vegas. The, the Falcons? The Dirty Birds by 10. Yeah, okay. We'll see. I mean, you never know. In Could Super be. Bowl 51. Yeah. You feel old with that. Yeah. I, I remember most of the Super Bowls. We just had the, the the 30th annual Royal Rumble last weekend. I remember yeah. all of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you watch? You watched it. I did, yeah. What'd you think? Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Randy Orton. Man. Winner of your 2017 Royal Terrible, Rumble. Terrible, right? However, I watched Raw Monday night for the first time in a long time. How was it? Really good. Really? Mm-hmm. They have potential wrestlers that could be good and potential storylines, but it's just... The creative man, he's, they need help writing. But it's that, the same people over and over and over again. That week of Raw is always consistently good oh, yeah. because that is the official first right. Raw heading towards WrestleMania. Yeah, the post-Rumble and post-Mania Raws are always the best. Mm-hmm. So Triple H came back. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's going to take on Seth Rollins. I saw. And then uh, Samoa Joe. Joe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that a legitimate injury he gave Seth Rollins? I saw. Oh, I don't. So, yeah. I mean, like days after. It wasn't even on the show. That's why I think it may be legit. The day after and two days after, uh, they said Seth Rollins, Re- Seth Rollins suffered an injury to his leg by that attack from Samoa Joe. Showed him on crutches walking out. So I don't know if that was... You never know. Yeah, that's what's cool about it. Probably a work. Maybe, but it wasn't on If the you sh- want to use the uh, wrestling lingo... Right, yeah. Probably a work. Yeah. But they just... It, it's one thing if you have the same story and same characters over and over, if you have a Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin angle, mm-hmm. or even a, a Chris Jericho versus Kurt Angle angle. That's cool, too. Rehash those over and over, but to have Randy Orton win the Royal Humble once again, I mean, does he have a big fan base? I, I don't know. I well, he's on un- SmackDown, and I, I haven't seen SmackDown in even longer. If it's a heel that I love and no one else loves, and I have personal gain for it, sure. If it's a someone I'm not a huge fan of, which he's growing throughout the years, but 10 years ago I couldn't stand John Cena, but the man was a, a huge seller of shirts and merchandise, that's understandable as well. But Randy Orton, is he selling T-shirts? Does he have a huge fan base? What's the point here? I think they're He's not a new guy to get a push. What's the point? Like Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton yeah. for the title? I don't know. And then Jericho factors into that See, somehow? I think we have an elimination chamber beforehand. I think somehow Bray Wyatt gets in that mix, wins the title, and it's Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton at Mania because they've had they've been part of the family for the past few months, you know. Or Jericho turns on Kevin Owens? Yeah, he's got the what? But the Bray Wyatt thing does make sense. Yeah, but Jericho has the U.S. title. He could go double title again. Mm-hmm. He's done it before. He was the first undisputed champion. Yeah. Well, there's wrestling talk. <laughs> Welcome to wrestling talk. Sorry. It's including pop culture. There's Russell Chet, 2017. <laughs> um, that's a good name. We have some big stuff coming up. Let's get into a logo for for Russell, Russell Chet. Chet. Russell no, Chet. Oh no, we're not doing any more I, logos. I like Russell Chet because that's funny. Welcome to Russell Chat. No, it's funny though. Well, people hear Russell and they think it's funny. Wh- how about this? I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> yeah. What if we make Russell Chat? Yeah. A oh every few months or whatever thing that we do in the new incarnation. I like Russell Chat. Wrestle Chat. It just sounds we'll, fun. We'll just call the episode that. Like I would love to tune in to Wrestle Chat. <laughs> weekly? <laughs> it's time for me to get my weekly Wrestle Chat. <laughs> I think we could. I'm not. We won't ever do that. But I think you and I could do a weekly wrestling podcast. Oh, I could easily do that. We're fans of the uh, of the history, the the present, and the future, and no prep whatsoever. No, not we'll at just all. sit here and talk. I know. You <laughs> remember? <laughs> you remember back in the day? It could happen. Um, pretty big week. Uh-huh. Uh We would be derelict. In our duties. That's a fun word. If we didn't mention uh, this, and that is after months, years of hype uh, that Ben Affleck was going to actually write and direct a, a standalone Batman movie in which he would star as the Dark Knight, uh, he announced this week that he will not direct. I wonder what happened there. What made him change the tides on that? Sad Ben Affleck after Dawn of Justice? Well, that was almost a year ago now. Yeah. Well, it's seven months. No, it was almost a year, wasn't it? It was Feb- no March. Came Look, out. here's the early, and this is just stuff I've read online. I don't have anybody who's seen any of these movies that I converse with, but this is stuff I've read. Uh, people have seen Wonder Woman and Justice League, and apparently both of those movies suffer from the same problems that the DC movies have suffered from uh-huh. up to this point. Uh, that's from that's one opinion. That's one opinion from one person who is anonymous on the internet. So take that for what it is. But if that is true, and Ben Affleck knows that, then that's probably why he's like, you know what, I'll be Batman, but I don't want to shoulder the responsibility of a world of internet hate if this movie doesn't turn out to be what everyone hopes it is. And his fame is is just growing every day in his director abilities, you know? So why stifle it with a possibly bad Batman movie. Right. Though his last two movies have done nothing. Really? He's been in two movies this year, and recently. Yeah. Uh, and The Accountant, mm-hmm. and then there was the gangster movie. Oh, wow. That have done nothing. Wow. I think he, did he direct the gangster movie? Not sure. Maybe. So. Hmm. I've never so. seen his directed movies. I hear they're great, though. Just Argo remember? is great. Really? Go see Argo. How's The Town? The Town's good. Yeah. Gone Baby Gone, I haven't seen. Right. So I can't. Give an opinion on that. He has some nudie shots in there, right? Of him? I think so. Really? I never saw it, but that's what I hear. <laughs> that's something you would do. <laughs> I'm going to direct this movie, and I'm going to be naked in it. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, speaking of DC, staying with DC, oh. um, DC debuted a new TV show this week. Oh, man. On NBC. Tell me you don't want to see this. Oh, I watched it. Oh, 
I watched it. How bad was it? Powerless. Yeah. Is every bit as terrible as you really? think it would be. Because I, I think I was the minority. I was seeing the commercials and dreading the uh, the premiere of that. But Oh, so was I. I knew it would be bad. But most people I spoke to, even hardcore comic fans, they would have the build up like have you seen the commercial for powerless i'm like yeah man and they would change my negativity it would get conveyed somehow to their positivity coming back I'm like it's gonna be awesome right i'm like yeah well <laughs> alan tudyk's good in it yeah he's good uh-huh. as bruce wayne's cousin oh uh, yeah who runs wayne right. security right vanessa hudgens is she's just doing what she's being directed to do but her character just seems fake mm-hmm. and i know it's all fake right but her character seems fake uh, Ron Funches is funny in it, and Danny Putty's funny in it. He's basically the same character he was on Community. Ah, nice. So, yeah. Uh, but that was a that was a terrible show I bad. watched last yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> is it for non comic fans to watch that and laugh at the call? What do you think it's for? It's or is it for comic fans to laugh at one more thing inside their world they're already part of? You know what this is? This is the first network show to try to grab money. From the rise of the superhero fandom, yeah, and fell miserably at it. Does it have any tie-in? If you said it's part of any universe, it's the, it's it's set in the DC universe, like the DC like Batman television. exists, but the DC like the Berlanti universe. I mean, which which universe? Oh no 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 no! It's not in the Berlanti. Universe. Okay, it's not in the good DC TV universe. Okay, so it's in the Gotham universe. <laughs> no no no! It's just it's, it's its own. Once it's again. its own. Wow, it's see? A, a a world in which DC. Heroes and villains. I mean, the opening credits are covers. Like the opening credits, the first shot is the um, action comics with Superman on it. Yeah, and then it goes through. You see like the Green Lantern, and, and you see the Flash, and so one more. But avenue. you don't see the. But you don't see these characters on the show. But one more confusing avenue for DC to take in TV that's not connected whatsoever with everything else. Exactly. Where Marvel does it right, be it good or bad, uh, it was all connected to the movies and the universe. Where Mar- DC is so disconnected. Right. You don't know what belongs with what. Right. Exactly. Huh. And it's really, I mean, can you imagine really the, bad. The everyday fan watching, being into The Flash, being into uh, Arrow, being into uh, 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 Legends of Tomorrow, and then seeing Gotham and knowing that's a DC comic and they're confused why it's not combined, and now seeing this and why that Batman isn't the same as Ben Affleck's Batman or Val Kilmer's Batman. or well, you see what I'm saying? I would think that maybe we're a little smarter today. But is the, and we know if you're going to watch the average that, per, I mean, average no, but average person is probably watching uh, just one of them watching hoarders. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's true too. <laughs> but the, you know, the average person may just pick one of those things to watch. Uh-huh. So to them, that is their DC universe. Like they could be a fan of Gotham and not watch anything on the CW or even go to the movies. They just like Gotham, yeah. which I could see that. I could see of all those shows. I could see Gotham as being the one that you could be a fan of and just like that movie or, or like that show and, and 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 not give two shits about any of the other stuff. Think so. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not going to be powerless. Not the one, no. <laughs> powerless will last six weeks. Yeah. It'll be gone in six weeks. I think so. Unless they just had a really bad first episode and they come back strong. But just the whole premise is kind of ridiculous. Really? Yeah. It look, I mean, it looked terrible from what I saw, the small, small clips. And, and, and you know, the, the show closed with, like, a news story about Batman. Yeah. And they developed something that Batman used against the Joker. Really? But it's all played for, it's all, it's a comedy. I mean, it's a sitcom. So it's all played for laughs, mm-hmm. which is fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Like, I am really looking forward to the Lego Batman movie. Yeah. And that is clearly played for laughs. So it's not that aspect of it that I mind so much. It's just kind of a bad show. Hmm. Let's do the, let's do the count now. Marvel has one universe, like I said, with TV and movie. It's all combined, right? It's all one single universe. Mm-hmm. Let's do a count on DC. How many universes? How many active universes they have right now? There's the Berlanti verse, right. which is Supergirl, mm-hmm. the Flash, yeah. Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Those all exist within the same universe. Right. That's one. That's one. So Gotham, the show itself, has one other. That's two. So that was two. But even Constantine. Right, yeah. So the TV show Constantine that was on years ago yeah. is part of the Berlanti verse. Is it Berlanti? Okay. Because Constantine has been on Arrow. They brought that Constantine mm-hmm. in on Arrow. Uh-huh. So that Berlanti verse even extends out to cover Constantine now. Yeah. So, okay. So that's one, two. So we're still with, two. With Gotham. Uh, then we have, of course, the new Powerless. That's three. That'll be three. Are we sticking with live action? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to go animate, that'd be crazy. Uh, then the actual film itself, the film. 
So that's four. Those four? So is that all we have? Are those, as far as current DC films, are those the only ones? I mean, would you count, I guess, Affleck is part of Suicide Squad, so that's connected. Yeah. That DCEU. Right, right. Is so all one. Still, four, that's, that's, that's confusing. Yeah. To we, Marvel's one. Yeah. Like, whatever we do, it's in the like, Agents yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D., Luke Cage, you know, Jessica Jones. Right. All of that is all within that MCU mm-hmm. that has the Avengers in it. Yeah. It's all, they're all connected. And I think that's the, uh, what the difference is in quality. But in all fairness, DC historically has loved the multiverse more than Marvel. That's true. <laughs> Even <laughs> that's in true. comics, that's DC true, yeah. loves the multiverse. Yeah. You know, crisis on infinite earths. That's true. So, uh, and, and, and even on the, the Berlanti verse, there's Earth One, Earth Two. Yeah, they just all acknowledge that that's all within. So you could conceivably say, and this has been thrown around, that these other universes are just that. They're just other universes right. where there happens to be a Batman that is Bruce Wayne or or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's possible. Know. Speaking yeah. of bad uh, bad media, I saw a terrible movie this week. Oh, oh, well, Terrible. Oh, and I think what you're going to say is connected <laughs> to what I'm going to say, but okay. go ahead. Uh, so it's been a while. I've, I'm a huge fan of this writer and director. I think you are as well. It's, it's well documented. We are fans of this guy, and he has a daughter a few years ago, maybe 16 <laughs> years ago, and decides she herself should be in Hollywood or wherever they film movies now. She has a comic book she name. She should be in Atlanta where mm-hmm. they film movies now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about Kevin Smith, of course, and his daughter, Harley Quinn Smith, and the movie Yoga Hosers, man. It's so bad. So bad. One of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, and I'll stick by that. I refuse to watch it. I want you to see it. I don't want to watch it. I want you to see it. Because I don't want to have to come on this show and talk about how much I dislike it. I would say <laughs> Kevin Smith has at least two installments in my top 20 movies of all time. So I love him. Clerks. Yeah. Dogma. I would put Mallrats and Mall Dogma. Mallrats. I would put Mallrats and Dogma up there before Clerks. I'm, I'm, Clerks is all right. It's not okay. my favorite. but That's fine. Mallrats and Dogma are special. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is not good, man. He's, he's lost his way. And I don't know if it's he's changed or I'm not changing with him is the question. We talked about, not sure if it was a show we have still or not. <laughs> we talked about, I think it was a Comic-Con last year whenever they first debuted or one of the first premieres of the movie. And someone had a Q&A and walked up to him with a microphone, just eye to eye, face to face, and told him how much he hated that movie, The Yoga Hosers, and how bad it was. And Kevin Smith was very nice to him. He had said no ill words to him whatsoever and told him that's fine. Uh, but maybe just possibly that movie wasn't for him. Maybe it was for 16-year-old girls. So do you think that's possible, this movie wasn't for you? Maybe. Yeah? You have a younger-ish niece. You should ask her. You should sit down with her and watch it and, and discuss it afterwards. Well, <laughs> I will tell there's, there's you. There's language and vulgarity. So is it for you? I mean, I'm not saying I'm not a prude and I'm not an idiot. I'm aware 16-year-old females do those things and speak those ways. But is it meant for them in that way? I don't know. Well, using my niece as an uh-huh. example... Uh, we, you know, we talked about Suicide Squad when it was out, and you absolutely hated the movie. Oh yeah, I had a lot of problems with it, but found some enjoyment in the movie. She absolutely loved that movie. Really? Whoa! And so, wow. What do you think? Maybe there is something to movies come out that are targeted to an audience that are, maybe Suicide Squad wasn't for us. Yeah. Now there was a lot of hate towards it from 35-year-old-plus fans Mm -hmm. of the material, but it made a lot of money, and it made a lot of money in repeat viewing. So who was going back to see that movie again? A younger audience. And in watching just the the way that movie was stylized, maybe Suicide Squad wasn't for us either. But I'm kind of... It saddens me. I would be curious about Yoga Hosers. (laughs) Because I, where I can probably make an argument that Suicide Squad was probably aimed at a younger audience, mm-hmm. and that's why we were, thusly, we were disappointed in it. Though I would say it was probably the plot problems. Yeah. But, be that as it may, <laughs> uh, I don't know about Yoga Hosers. I haven't seen it. And I'm I not going to watch it. I won't Not watch at all? It. No. You gave Tusk a chance. Give this a chance. I did give, give <laughs> Tusk a chance. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I don't want... I don't want to. <laughs> don't make me do it. I mean, she is a, a terrible actress. Uh, Lily Depp. Lily Rose. Rose Lily? Lily Rose Depp? Whatever yeah. her name is. Johnny two, Depp's daughter. Two flowers and a dip. Yeah. <laughs> she uh, She's a terrible actress as well. They're only where they are because of their fathers, clearly. Nepotism at its worst. I will tell you this, 
Like they were in Tusk briefly. Yeah. And it wasn't Small that. Scene. It was it was one scene yeah. and they were fine. Sure. Okay. Uh can you can you carry a whole movie on that? Probably not. <laughs> Her performance as uh baby Silent Bob and Jane Silent Bob Straight Back was better than this movie. <laughs> well, she didn't say anything. Exactly. That's why it was better. Uh, I, I will tell you this. Uh, you know, we were talking about the Berlanti verse, and those CW shows are back from winter break. They're in, I think, two. There's two episodes now since the winter break. Supergirl's first show back was called Supergirl Lives. Mm. It was directed by Kevin Smith. One of the characters, one of the minor characters in that episode. Was, which was a great episode. It was it was a really strong episode. as Because Kevin Smith does have a knack for directing these one-hour, he-didn't-write superhero shows. And comics are his, his ultimate passion, beyond all. Yeah. Because the episode of The Flash last year that he directed was quite possibly the best episode of The Flash last season. Really? Yeah. Uh, the Runaway Dinosaur was the name of that episode. Uh, Supergirl Lives was a really good episode. Uh, one of the minor characters was played by Harley Quinn Smith. And I have to be honest with you, even in, in, in a small dose, <laughs> she's just, and I don't, I don't want to do too much of this because she's young, she is learning her craft, and she's doing it in a way that most people don't. Her dad is Kevin Smith, which means he ha- can put her in a movie or in an episode of Supergirl, whereas she's, what, 18, 19? I think 16, 17, yeah. Unless they were kid actors, most actors at that age are still learning how to act, yeah. which is exactly what she's doing. So her performance today may not dictate her performance 15 years from now. She may end up being a fanta- fantastic actress. <laughs> but at her level and her skill level right now, it's a mistake to keep putting her in roles like this. Let her go do, you know, stage. I mean, let her go learn the craft and then put her in these things mm. because it was pretty bad in Supergirl, yeah. or, uh, in Supergirl in that episode. I mean, not only the bad acting in Yoga Hosers, but the movie itself. Mm-hmm. If you had grade A actresses in there, it still wouldn't be any good. Yeah. Glenn Close couldn't save this one. That's <laughs> 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 true. It's, it's bad. I mean, with the Bratsies and the, the, the goalie golems, and it's just bad. How are the effects? How are the Bratsies? So um, um, that's the one upside I'll give this movie. You know, I'm a fan of, of practical effects over CGI any day of the week. Like in Tusk? Yeah, yeah. All practical? Right. <laughs> and the every single effect, for the most part in this movie, was a practical effect. Every every enemy and villain you could touch, smell, see, and hear. Mm-hmm. Not in a good way, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just, it's just, do, give me a scam. Go on Netflix and, and skim through it in 15 minutes. Stop at parts. When you see a long scene of dialogue... Listen, when you see a long scene of action, stop for a bit. Check it out. Skim through it. Yeah. You won't miss anything. You'll get the idea. Well, Kevin Smith's uh, talent for a long time has, I mean, because some directors, you take a, a scene where there's a lot of exposition or dialogue, they can't block it and shoot it in a way that keeps you in the movie. Right. I mean, I've seen movies where there's people talking and I check out, but Kevin Smith has always had a knack for keeping you engaged mm-hmm. Even in long scenes of dialogue. Yeah. I mean, that's all Clerks was. Yeah. Because of the budget restraints. Yeah, he's spoken many times of his different directorial styles compared to like a Hollywood director. He right. Knew, he said for like a Quentin Tarantino movie, you could turn the volume down, hear no dialogue, and kind of watch that and see scene by scene. You could see it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh, okay, I agree with that. Yeah. Now, where a Kevin Smith movie, you're going to close your eyes and just hear dialogue alone, and with that, you can tell it's a Kevin Smith movie. Yeah. That's that's what the difference is. Now, with Tarantino, maybe a bad example because the dialogue is always fantastic in a Tarantino that has movie. Both, yeah, they're both, both goods on, on both ends. Yeah. And yeah. they both kind of have that. Tarantino and Kevin Smith both, you know, are similar in age. So they both came up, you know, through the early to mid 90s. Mm-hmm. And both had that knack for taking pop culture and incorporating it into to dialogue that anyone can watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably won't watch Do it, just uh, yoga skim. hosers. Give the old yoga skin. Do it. <laughs> the yoga skin. <scare. laughs> but it seems to be doing well on Netflix. Is it really? It seemed to have found an audience. Oh, wow. I will tell you the success of yoga hosers on Netflix will mm-hmm. get you Moose Jaws. Oh. <laughs> the third in his great, uh, was it the, the, the uh, Great North Trilogy? Great North Trilogy, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> trilogy. Trilogy. <laughs> Uh, 
And uh, I guess we should also mention this too. The creator of Pac Man passed away. That was sad. What was his name? Dover uh, Rarigato? It's something, is it, was it Nakamura? I've, I've honestly forgotten. I knew this, but I forgot. Really? I just thought you knew this. I, I used to. I'm getting yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, from what I hear, because I've always heard the history that he was the creator of Pac-Man. Now things are coming out. He wasn't the creator of Pac-Man. He was just the owner slash president of Namco who owned Pac-Man for a bit. I think he gave the old Bill Finger on there. Oh, or the, wow. I gave the, the anti-Bill Finger. He gave the old Bob Kane he on He gave the Bob Kane. Yeah. He Bob Kane the creator yeah, he, he, of Pac-Man. He, he Bill Fingered someone. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Different way to use that verb. And that's how we got Pac- <laughs> And that's how a Pac-Man is born. <laughs> um... <laughs> He was portrayed in Pixels, a movie I saw a couple of weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Really? The Adam Sandler yeah. vehicle. Yeah. Pixels. <laughs> How was that? Just as bad as you thought it would be. Really? Yeah. You should watch. Just like Powerless. See, I can't watch Pixels because I think I'll, I'll. that's too close to my heart. Maybe that's why you won't watch Yoga Hosers. I can't watch Pixels. Maybe. I, mean, I can't. I won't do it. I just don't know how Pixels got made. Yeah. Who's that for? 40-year-olds? Because they don't like it. No, that's exactly who that was for. Do 40-year-olds like it? I don't know. I don't think a ten-year-old is like, who's that big yellow guy eating dots? But every video game reference in that movie, you know, who's good in that movie though? Who's that? Uh, well, first of all, every video game reference is for forty-year-olds. Uh-huh. Josh Gad is good in that movie. Really? Yeah, he's pretty funny. Yeah, o- Olaf. Yeah. Have you seen his videos trying to get Daisy Ridley to give him uh, the inside scoop on on the new Star Wars? Uh huh. Currently, they're on the set of some movie working together, and he will almost daily post YouTube videos on his Facebook page, though, and he'll invite her into his his trailer, and he's filming her on his cell phone. He's like, hey, Daisy, seriously, um, just give me some inside scoop on Star Wars. Oh, and, and they're working on something together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she starts laughing, saying she can't say anything. He's like, hey, I'll give you the inside scoop. Olaf is in Frozen 2. Okay, so I gave you a secret. <laughs> give, give me something. And she won't, she won't tell him anything. She leaves. She's like, see you, Josh. It's pretty funny. I thought Olaf died at, in Frozen. Did he? I don't know. I don't know. I, I blocked it out. I haven't seen it I have. all the way through. I feel like I've seen it, but I haven't actually sat down and watched it. You didn't it experience it? I haven't experienced wow. it. Wow. Though I have experienced a Frozen sing along. Did you? At Disney World. Really? Yep. How was that? I, I told my wife, what was it? What was the compromise? <laughs> like, I guess we went and met Chewbacca, yeah. which she enjoyed too. Which what? means I kind of you get tricked. You I get, did kind of get tricked. You got duped. But we went and did the Star Wars stuff, and I said, uh, which she had told me, like, if there's one thing we do today in Hollywood Studios, I want to go to the Frozen Sing Along. <laughs> <I'm like>, oh. <laughs> so I went to the Frozen Sing Along, <laughs> and and I cat sang along with the songs. Well, the one that I knew. Yeah. So you know, there's this big stage production going on and I'm sitting there beside her. Meow meow meow. Meow meow meow. Meow 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 meow. Everyone knows the letter go. Meow meow meow. Meow meow meow. Meow 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 meow. Oh meow meow meow. Oh sorry. Oh god wow. Okay, a little carried away. A little bit. Uh are you ready to talk about football movies? Yeah, let's do it. Before we do, I talked about Legends or the the CW shows. If you have not seen that first episode back from winter break of Legends of, of Tomorrow, go find it and watch it. It's on the CW.com. You can go watch it absolutely free because it revolves around George Lucas. And it answers the question, what would have happened to our world if George Lucas didn't make Star Wars? Really? Oh, wow. And it's fantastic. I'm going to have to watch that now. That show is starting to become my favorite. Really? Yeah. I was, for, I were, I like the first half of the first season, I watched it and enjoyed it greatly. They didn't know what they were, I think, well, they, not that they didn't, they didn't know what they were doing, those <laughs> sons of bitches. I think they kind of lost their way a little bit. I think so. And then they've spent a good deal of time to try to get that show back on track. And so far, these two episodes back, it's it's really good. It's almost got like a uh, a comics, almost like a Doctor Who feel to it. To it. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And what's his name from Doctor Who? Right, right. It. Yeah. Um. That plays uh, Rip mm-hmm. Hunter. Yeah. Go find The Legends of Tomorrow. Do it. Watch that first. I, I can't tell you which episode number it is, but just it's the first one back from winter break. Yeah. <laughs> it's like not this past episode, but the one before that. So, uh, yeah, let's do a, a little football talk. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Let's do it. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Cornflake. So we host the Flopcast. We cover nerd and geek subjects of all types, but this is sort of a sillier, goofier side of geekdom, I'd say. We love to talk about music, especially funny music. We talk about comic books, conventions. Saturday morning cartoons! Oh yeah. I'd say if you're going to put the Flopcast in Brady Bunch terms, we're like the cousin Oliver of podcasting. (laughs) 
and we do a ridiculous new Flopcast episode every week. What is wrong with us? We really have nothing else to do. <laughs> We're part of the Earth Station One Podcast Network. And you can find us at Flopcast.net. Professional football in America is a special game, a unique game. Played nowhere else on earth, it is a rare game. The men who play it make it so. From the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, uh, this is football movies for people who eat football. Suddenly it became like Harrison Ford. Yeah, I don't know. That, uh, this transition. It, it, I don't know. That was terrible. Wow. Can I do that again? If you want, go for it nah, again. No, you're it's good. Bad. It won't be. So, like football that. movies for people who hate football, but also for people who like football. Sometimes you can watch but that's these. that's a given, though, right? Maybe. Like, I want to say, like, you could enjoy these movies yeah. even if you hate football. But it's a given you're going to enjoy them if you like football. I guess so. But I think that's good for any, like, any, uh, any, anything at all, any kind of media. Does that make sense? No. Like going into... No, because what? there are some science fiction movies that you would hate unless you like science fiction movies. It's funny you say that. In a few short hours here, after this, I'm going to uh, a, a friend of my wife's. She's she's rented out a small theater, and she's never seen Star Wars, so she's seeing her This first... is what you guys are going, going with, because we talked about this yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going for it. So I got to know what he's starting with. Episode 7. Good call. I guess so. I'm, I'm trying to fight that. Though I would say go see Rogue One in a matinee. But that wouldn't make any yeah, sense. It would make total sense. <laughs> that's even. That's not even close to a part one. It's like a three point five. Rogue One. Well, like a a point one. A point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Rogue a, One yeah. is the best prequel ever for a Star Wars movie. Oh, I'll, I'll stand take by that, that to the bank. I'll stand by that. Best prequel ever. Yeah. yeah. That's not very much to go on though. <laughs> True. But it's a. It's a. Out of a and seven movie run, a seven chapter. Why would you start with a three point five? Because it's the very first Star Wars story so far. First Star Wars story, but it's still a three point, it's chapter 3.5. They will go back. If I had a book it. of seven chapters, I would not, hey, 3.5, hit it right here. <laughs> like, I bet the Han movie takes place before Rogue One. Yeah. Like, it almost has to. Yeah. But at all that we have right now, this is the very first Star Wars story. Right, yeah. And it leads right into episode four. Right. A New Hope. Yeah. That, that's true. So, if someone in their mid 30s who'd never seen any dot, any morselet of any Star Wars movie, I'm going to let you know how it goes. I'm going tonight to see it, uh, episode seven in theaters again. So what are you going to watch after that? I I'm going to bring some things because it's kind of like a whole party of things that she hasn't seen before. Really? Yeah. She, she, <laughs> and I'm bringing some things. <laughs> no, she's uh, she invited like, a good-sized crew there. But you've never seen this before. <laughs> but she, So she grew up in a fairly religious family. Right. And uh, it was just kind of sheltered her whole life. So she is, like I said, 32, 33 uh, Karate Kid, Princess Bride, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future. Movies she's never, I mean, has no clue what they're even about. Star Wars, of course. Not only never seen them, but doesn't know what it even means. How do you go your whole life without e seeing Ghostbusters? I know. But you say she was sheltered, she's 30. These movies have been shown on cable I know. for the last 40 years. And she's been a legal adult for 15 years, so what's the so, problem? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like Princess Bride? So what does she watch? I don't know. Princess Bride, a never-ending story. She's never heard of them. What? Never heard. Like she, she, she's never seen a never-ending story. That's church-friendly. Never even heard of it. Never heard of it. Didn't know it existed. No, you. So the Harry Potter movies are yeah. totally. I don't know. I, I, could, I guarantee you, she's never seen a Harry that Potter. That could be on the list. But by then, she was an adult. When they came out, she would have been 18, 19 years old. Right. So it's possible she had the know-how to go see it herself. So what does she watch? I don't know. I think just this is her first sci-fi movie she's ever watched I'm a big I'm fan of Miller's Crossing <laughs> big Walk to Remember fan <laughs> hey, things like you know Sweet November and Legends of the Fall have you guys seen Fried Green Tomatoes <laughs> what about Still Magnolias I love it oh ugh. that's my kryptonite if you want to kill me yeah make me watch Fried Green Tomatoes and Still Magnolias Re back to back really I've always put those together yep there was a, uh, I think, late 90s hatred I have for the, the sister movies, I call them. The Yaya -Ya Sisterhood and Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it makes me angry. It just makes me angry. It's like the country music of my movies. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know why. Interesting. Yeah. But so, you know, episode seven starts, and I, I'm so afraid. My wife Cassie's like, no, nah, it'd be good. It's just a good, good, good intro to the Star Wars. I'm like, I don't know if, if you have no previous knowledge of Star Wars, well, it makes sense. Well, I like, mean, that's why well, I say you should probably start with episode four. 
You think so? Well, like I said last week when we first had this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go back and listen to the last episode. Right, yeah. Uh, show it to her like we saw him. Yeah. Episode four. But it's a tough, I think we're in a different mindset. She is a, you know, in her 30s, a female. It has no fondness at all for sci-fi. But she starts with a 70s sci-fi movie. You're, it's disre- a tough sell. you're disregarding the fact that you can understand I'm watching a movie that is 30 years old. I know. I so know. it's not going to be as technically fantastic. I know. But, but then appreciate the fact that without this movie, we wouldn't have a lot of what we enjoy in films today. Has she ever seen Jurassic Park? I doubt it. I mean, she's going into this knowing that people worship Star Wars and think of it as one of the best stories ever told. And, and beginning episode four for her could be a tough sell. What if she's like, this is what, it, what if you like, this is one of the best stories ever told? Yeah. No. The greatest story ever told. Genesis is the story of Jesus. <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. Slowly back away. And we close the door. We watched that on Easter. <laughs> so we'll see what. I just don't know if Seven's going to have the oomph that other things will. Followed by the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Show her History of the World Part One. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, followed by Life of Brian. I give you 15. <laughs> yeah. I get Life of Brian. Ten Commandments. But whenever Han Solo and Chewbacca come into the Millennium Falcon for the first time in 30 years, she's not going to get it. She won't have that tear in her eye. She won't have that feel. Uh, Chewy, we're home. Whenever uh, Kylo Ren is worshiping his father's burnt helmet and said, I will finish what you started, she won't have that oomph in her soul. <laughs> These are the things I worry about. I know. I understand. <laughs> uh, the Super Bowl's this Sunday, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, before we get into the movies, what is your favorite uh, Super Bowl halftime show? Ooh. Do you remember? Uh, it's a I, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let me guess. Let me, uh, let me see if I can guess. You're going to go it's, with... It's kind of a close tie. 2001, NSYNC, Aerosmith, and Britney Spears. <laughs> no, that was terrible. Oh, okay. No. Uh, big fan of Michael Jackson. If not him, it would be Prince. Prince was amazing as well. Prince was in 2008? Mm, eight or, yeah, eight or nine. Uh, yeah. Michael Jackson was 1993? Right. Yeah. And uh, Bruno Mars, just a few years ago, was pretty amazing as that well. That one with Beyonce and he Coldplay. Sold like, I was never, ever a Bruno Mars fan, but that performance alone sold me. Beyonce has performed twice at the Super Bowl in the last... Six years. Yeah. so That's terrible. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite uh, halftime? Uh, I enjoyed uh, with the Rolling Stones, when the Rolling Stones performed. Um, I, I enjoyed the Bruce Springsteen. Oh, yeah? When Bruce Springsteen performed. One of my all-time favorites, and obviously I'm a fan, but also the timing was the uh, 2002 U2 Super Bowl mm-hmm. performance. That was, pretty, that was pretty heart-wrenching. I can't remember that one, though. Yeah, they did. I'm sure it was like they had the American flag on the field yeah. and all that. You know, back when we all, you know, seemed to like each other. Got along. Yeah. Got along. Remember those days? Yeah. Where we weren't like, I want to kill you. Yeah. The problem is now, if to be patriotic, it would be Toby Keith or someone. Right. Well, patriotism has been hijacked. That's true. Yeah. That's just, uh, maybe we'll <laughs> save that for another day. <laughs> but it's true. But patriotism has been hijacked. That's true. Like when you use that word, it sounds yeah. bad. Yeah. Now when you say I'm patriotic, it means you hate everyone who's yeah. not white. Yeah. Like, if you were to wear, if I saw someone, I, I mean, I can't say this because I would unknowingly judge them myself. If I saw someone walking down the street with an American flag t-shirt or hat on, I would think oddly of them. You know what I mean? Does that sound bad? You think they're a trumpet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that weird? I know. And I, it's, it sounds bad to even say it. Did you say eagle? Did you throw eagle in there? No, eagle. Definitely eagle. Yeah. Like a wolf howling at the moon. Yeah. You know the kind. <laughs> you know the, the airbrush fanatics. <laughs> if you could go on the side of a 70s van. Yeah. You question the caliber of that person. <laughs> And nothing against that. I'm just saying there's a different kind of person. Uh, agreed. <laughs> uh, and, and most of them are misunderstood and lost. Yeah. <laughs> but again. Here we go. Football. That's for a different day. Football movies. Uh, before we do that, yeah. uh, according to, I forget which website this came from. These are the, they polled 100 people survey, top five answers on the board. Oh. Uh, their five favorite Super Bowl performances ever. Mm-hmm. Number five is U2. Number four is Prince. Number three is Aerosmith, NSYNC, and Britney. Mm-hmm. A uh, number two is Janet and Justin. I wonder why. Yeah. Wait, so Michael's not even on? And number one is Michael Jackson okay, good. from 1993. I was, I was scared for a bit. Yeah. But thank goodness. Well, you know, after that Janet and uh, Justin thing, like mm-hmm. that's when we went to like, oh, this this year it's Tony Bennett. Yeah, <laughs> next up, the Gaither Band. <laughs> what, I wonder if your friend's a fan of the Gaither Band. <laughs> Quite possibly. The uh, Lawrence Welk, maybe. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what we want to do here is we want to do some uh, football films that you can enjoy even if you hate football. Yeah. It's a given you'll enjoy them if you like football. Yeah. But if you hate football, uh, what uh, if you were going to say if you hate football and you're not going to watch the Super Bowl uh-huh. and you're not going to watch the Puppy Bowl yeah. with the Kitty Halftime. But the Lingerie Bowl. They don't do that anymore. Not anymore? 
I told you so. I was at a, a party, a Super Bowl party one time, and they actually paid that for like pay-per-view prices to watch that. Was it just during the halftime? I think so, but they paid money for it. Yeah. It was, I remember when they did the WWF match. Oh, yeah, the empty stadium and all that. Yeah, with the yeah. rock and mankind. Yeah. Um. So what would what would be the first one you would recommend? I'm going to go, I'm going to start strong here. I grew up with this movie. Little Giants. Uh, damn it. Ah. You got to kill my thunder. Uh, I'm a fan of it. It's a Disney movie starring Ed O'Neill, a.k.a. Al Bundy, and Rick Moranis, a.k.a. Well, he's got a lot of roles. He shrunk kids. Yeah. He's a, uh, is he the key master? Mr. The Tully. Key? Yeah, Tully. What was that first name? Lewis. Lewis Tully. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know Rick Moranis. You know him. You love him. But he is, imagine a world, a city. Yes, have some. Where f- <laughs> yes, have some. A city where football is life. Not just f- not pro football, not college football, not even high school football, but peewee football is life. This city has multiple state championships. The the hardened Cowboys, always coached by Mr. Ed O'Neill himself. And his longtime foe, was it his brother? I think that may have been his brother. Was it his brother? Brother or maybe just a person he bullied back. I can't remember that. Anyways, this guy. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes it sense. It does make sense. Uh, he has people, and his daughter especially, is a fantastic football player, Rick Moranis' daughter, by the name of Icebox. Is she the kicker? No, she's a tomboy. She's like the, the hardest tackler in the world. I've never seen Little Giants. You've never seen Little Giants. She Icebox goes there, and she tries out for the team. She's the best player in the whole field. Because she's a girl, a.k.a. an outcast, she does not get picked for uh, the Cowboys team. Not only that, but her friends, the fat kids, the slow kids, the uh, the skinny kids, the tall, all the outcasts don't get picked, and they're sad, and they come home, and Rick Moranis' character sees the sadness in their eyes. Now, I agree that not everyone should have a participation trophy at that age, but you should at least be able to play. Tryouts are bad at that age. I agree with that. You should play. You should be able to play. I think all games should have a score catch. There should be a winner and a loser. You should learn from that, but you should have the chance to even win or to lose. Yeah. And that's what this movie's about. And so they form the Giants against the Cowboys, and they finally face off, and a great hilarity ensues. And you can tell Disney paid for this because it's the The actual actual, Giants and Cowboys logos. And John Madden shows up at the end. (laughs) That's true. And They're they're walking in the street, and a a bus comes up of uh, John Madden. Hey, where? how do you get to the... He asked the question to the, the local city. <laughs> How do you get to Cowboy Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, before, Half the time, these trick plays never work. So that, Trump, John. Because like a week before the game against the, the big Cowboys, this is what happens. They have a scrimmage set up, and whoever wins that scrimmage is the official team of the town, the Cowboys or the Giants. Uh, a week before the game happens. Really? Yeah, that's what happens. Like everybody else has to leave. Yeah, well, they don't have to leave the town. They just can't be the team. Yeah. So the week before, the Giants are struggling, and there's no way they're going to beat the Cowboys. But think for it, like I said, John Madden pulls up with his actual Cowboy team and they do a montage, a training montage to uh, make the Giants a great team once and for all. And how much did uh, how much did he talk about John Elway? Not too much. I oh, know, wait a minute. Brett What's Favre. the quarterback? Brett Favre. He loves Brett Favre. Sorry, Brett Favre. <laughs> That's what I meant. Not at all. Some yeah. booms, though. Boom. <laughs> Some of those were in there. But check out Little Giants. It's uh, I guess it's meant for kids, and I was a kid when I loved it and uh, watched it the first time, but it's still it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Little Giants, a movie, a football movie for people who don't like football. There you go. Uh, well, I have a football movie for people who don't like football and don't like to have a good time. Okay, what's that? Uh, I went a little, little different tone. Uh, my first suggestion is the 1977 classic Black Sunday. Good Lord. What's that even about? It sounds like a horror movie. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, uh, using the Goodyear blimp, terrorists plot an attack during Super Bowl X. They're going to crash the Goodyear blimp into the Orange Bowl during Super Bowl X. It uh, stars Robert Shaw, who uh, was Quint from in Jaws. Also, Bruce Dern, he plays the Goodyear blimp pilot. And Martha Keller, who plays uh, a member of the Black Se- September terrorist group. So, yeah, Bruce Dern is this Vietnam POW. And then after he gets back home, uh, he becomes a pilot. And he for the the blimp, and he flies these a blimp, the, the blimp all over the sporting events in America, and he becomes disenchanted because he's still dealing with being a POW of Vietnam and seeing people having a good time, you know, uh, kind of uh, sends him in a dark place, mm-hmm. and he's radicalized by the character played by Martha Keller, and they devise a plan to make the blimp a giant hydrogen bomb. <laughs> That they will crash into the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Ten. This movie would never get made today. No, no, never. no, 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 no. And Robert Shaw plays an Israeli agent who's been tracking Keller. And th- this is not, like, it sounds like a ridiculous plot, but it's taken very seriously. Mm. 
Uh, there's a lot of death in this. It's not even really a Super Bowl or a football movie until the end. Wow. That just happens to take place at the at the Orange Bowl. Uh, but the movie ends with uh, Shaw's character. He's in a police helicopter above the blimp, and he's got to jump onto the blimp and connect it so they can use the, the helicopters to pull the blimp away from the Orange Bowl before it blows up. Wow. And That's intense. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Black Sunday. It's really hard to find. Never heard of that. Obviously, for reasons, you know, in, in, in you know, the 21st century, mm. 2017, uh, no one really uh, promotes the fact that there's a movie about a terrorist group that attacks the Super Bowl. Right. Which is a huge fear, like day, like yearly fear. Now. Mm. Like, I think the Super Bowl is listed as there's a few events that are listed by Homeland Security that have the utmost Security available, which means they spend a year basically trying to plan security around the event. Which is odd because, is one of them. I mean, attendance-wise, it's the same as any other. I mean, it's in Houston this year, so there's maybe a few thousand more people there than a normal Houston Texans game. Yeah. I mean, you go to any Ohio State game each week, it's going to have much more attendance than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just odd that's focused like that when there are much bigger gatherings of people weekly. Um, it's odd. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Some interesting facts about Black Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's based off the novel by Thomas Harris. Uh, which he was inspired to write the novel after the Munich Olympic attacks. Ah. And I believe that was the Black September group that attacked in Munich. Uh, It's the only Thomas Harris novel not to feature Hannibal Lecter as a character. Really? So he wrote all those Hannibal Lecter books, but then he also wrote Black Sunday. It's the only one of his novels that doesn't have Hannibal Lecter in it. And the scenes for this, like the Super Bowl scenes, were actually filmed at the Orange Bowl during Super Bowl X, which was the Dallas Cowboys versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wow. And uh, the blimp scenes, like when the blimp is actually coming into the stadium at the end of the movie, they were shot around the Orange Bowl the day before and the day after the Super Bowl. But there's a lot of the shots filmed actually during Super Bowl X in mm-hmm. the movie. Now, now just wrap your head around that. Imagine in 2017 if Warner Brothers went to the NFL and said, hey, we want to do this, but we want to remake Black Sunday. <laughs> and we want to use NFL licensed teams and actually film it during the Super Bowl. Hey, uh, refresh my memory. What was that? Uh, what was the plot of that movie? It's terrorists att- attack the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, no, no, let's no, not do that. But uh, how yeah. about no? Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna have a rousing good time on Super Bowl Sunday, <laughs> watch 1977's Black Sunday. Interesting. I never heard of that one. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. What yeah. about um, in the 90s? I feel like high school and just in general for lack of a better term, varsity movies about football were a big deal back then. Varsity football movies. Like Varsity Blues? Like Varsity Blues. Friday Night Lights? Exactly. There was a big time where yeah. uh, full-grown adults were fully invested into not only TV show or movies, but sometimes TV shows about high school students' football life. The blind side? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, Varsity Blues and Friday Night Lights stand out to me. I get those two mixed up Which they're up totally sometimes. different. They are. I mean, the plot-wise, they're totally Just different. in general, the, the high schoolness of it and the yeah. serious... Now, uh, remember the Titans was a high school football movie, but for some reason yeah. that's different to me. Yeah. I do like Varsity Blues. I'm a big fan of that one over Friday Night Lights, though. Was uh, Tim McGraw in the movie or the show Friday, Friday Night, Night Lights? Lights? He was one of the two. See, I get that mixed up as well. I was think the he, movie. I think he was in the movie. I believe the movie. Because he was also in The Blind Side. Really? With Sandra Bullock. Wow. Yeah. Likes his, uh, his movie about football, huh? I'm not sure if he was in Friday Night Lights. I've only seen that movie yeah. like, once. Yeah. A f- a several years ago. So you appreciate Varsity Blues more? I've seen it. Well, I think it's been on cable more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You, you you threw Dawson from Dawson's yeah, Creek in there. a classic whipped cream bikini. And a fat guy. You can't lose. With a fun name. Billy Bob that eats pancakes and yeah. drinks the syrup. Yeah. You you know, know. He's a pet pig, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> but Friday Night Lights was pretty serious, though. It was, yeah. That was That's actually a pretty good, I don't know. I mean, people around here in Tennessee take football pretty serious. They do, yeah. Even high school football. Mm-hmm. But there's a town whose only purpose is the high school football team. Right. And what happens when that season's not going to happen or happen as you hope. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. Isn't that so odd that I mean, it's, everyone has their own thing. I'm not bashing, mm-hmm. but it's odd. That's a thing, especially here in the South. That some cities just rally around high school athletics. Yeah. I'm curious of the, uh, the motivation behind that. I really am. My hometown of Fairview, man. It's, it's a big deal. Big deal. Like I, the, I, the I guys drove, are in the barber shop on Sunday talking yeah, about the high school football I drove there game. last week uh, just to see some friends, and every almost every single billboard was support the jackets. Blah. I mean, it's the the actual local high school. Well, team. I mean that's I mean, but that happens though. I guess. I mean, you know, you want to rally around the home team. Yeah, but I mean, show support to the high school team. I can think of better things to put on a uh, billboard. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> Go see Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah, full polls. My friend's never seen Star Wars. Which episode do I start with? It's a certain <laughs> number of honks for the episode. Uh, yeah. So one, I mean, no one's going to be like, meh, for episode one. But for episode seven, it's like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, Rogue One would be like a, meh, 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 meh. Not if I'm honking. No. Oh. It's three and a half honk. That's a three and a half. Oh, so you're actually rating it with by, your honk. Well, you by the episode number is what you honk. If you want episode four, New Hope. Oh, meh, yeah. Meh, yeah. Meh, meh, meh. yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a new hope account. That's a good voting system. That's what I'm saying. For episode seven, if people want that, me, 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 you lose count of it after a while. I thought you were saying that's how excited they were for that. No, no, no. You have to, you have to, the number of honks equals your, the, the number installment. Not, nece- not necessarily no. your excitement. But they want to tag the clones. Me, me. <laughs> but it works <laughs> because, like, episode one, me. excitement <laughs> and honk. It works both ways. That's true. Me, 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 me. Are they sending Morse code? Uh, what uh, else do you have on your list? I uh, also have, how about Rudy? We all love Rudy. Oh, it's the best Brendan Fraser movie <laughs> since... Encino Man? Or what was the one that... Uh, Bedazzled? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So what was the name of that? Bedazzled. Yeah, there was Bedazzled. Was with, it Bedazzled? With, uh, what's her name? Well, Elizabeth Hurley. Elizabeth Hurley. I saw that in theaters. As the devil. And that was a remake I found out years later. I had it no was, idea. Yeah. I did not know that at all. Uh-huh. Uh, but I love Rudy. It's the classic underdog story. It's kind of like a, Rudy. Kind of like Rocky Rudy. for football movies. What it could be. I get, yeah. 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 The guy that really doesn't deserve to be where he is. Things happen. He has a chance to be where he is and somehow rises above. Uh-huh. Even though Rocky goes on to win championships and be an ultimate star, Rudy really doesn't. But and even works. though he went to Notre Dame. Yeah. Which yeah. seems like that would have been a scary school to go to. <laughs> you think so, right? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it stars Sean Astin. It's a good guy. Rudy. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. What? You just realized something. Uh, so was Brendan Fraser in that as well? In Rudy? I think he was in Rudy. Was he in there? I never, th- I never knew. I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> if there was only a way, we could look this sort of stuff yeah, up. check it out. Research it. Uh, let me uh, pull up. Because when I said him, I thought of Encino Man. I'm like, wait, was Brendan Fraser in, in Rudy? <laughs> Rudy Giuliani is the first <laughs> thing to come up. I thought Brendan Fraser was in that movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, I thought he had. A, I thought he was one of the kids. But nope. Well. Ned Beatty. <laughs> Close enough, right? Vince Vaughn. Yeah. That, I think that's what I was thinking. Uh, I think I was picturing the Vince Vaughn character. I was uh, thinking Brendan Fraser. Because, you know, everybody confuses Vince Vaughn and Brendan Fraser. Totally. Same hairline. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> that is a good movie. That's a good cast. Yeah, it is. Rudy. Rudy. I don't know why I was thinking that. Weird. Yeah. Well, Rudy's still better than Bedazzled. There you go. <laughs> what else do you have? Uh, the Longest Yard. Ah. Which one are we talking? I watched, in preparation for this, uh-huh. now, almost three weeks ago, <laughs> uh, the both. The both. The both. <laughs> I watched the both. The original from 1974, and then I compared that to the remake. See, I've never seen the in original, but I have, I have seen the remake. Very uh, very wrestler heavy, the remake is. Yes, yes it is. Uh, if you've never seen The Longest Yard from 1974, Burt Reynolds portrays an ex-football player who finds himself in the hands of a prison warden who has a semi-pro team that he wants to win the state championship. And so, you know, Reynolds being this ex-quarterback who was kind of shamed out of football for shaving points off a game. Um, you know, he uh, he's in this prison. And, of course, the warden's like, I'm going to frame you and blah, 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 unless you do it. And so he agrees to basically put a team together. But his idea is your team needs to play, which the team is made up of guards in the prison. Your team needs to play games to practice. So they agree to have a cons versus guards game. This is also the plot of the 2005 where Adam Sandler plays the Burt Reynolds character from the original. The first one, though, being from the 70s and looking back with kind of the perspective of 2017, it's um, there's some there's some stuff, some questionable stuff in there. I mean, it's it's in the 70s. It was supposed to be more serious than the 2005 remake was, which was almost a straight up comedy. Oh, yeah. But there's Burt Reynolds throws his girlfriend around. A really? little bit at the beginning of this movie. Was he chewing gum the whole time? Yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Funny hat. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Wow. And that was kind of, well, I guess it's meant for you not to like him, maybe, even though he's yeah, the main character. I guess it is. It's, it's trying to build him not yeah. likable, and then by the end of the movie, he's gone through a personality change. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's hard to like a guy that in the first five minutes is throwing a girl around the room like three times. Wow. And like pushing her up against the wall and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then he, of course, you know, goes on a kick ass car chase with the cops. Mm hmm. And that's when you get the laugh and the chewing gum, for sure. Uh, uh, 
And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of racial epitaphs. In really? This movie oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure I can when see he gets that. into the prison. So I don't know. Uh, it's weird too. Eddie Albert is the prison warden, mm-hmm. and you may know him as the farmer from Green Acres, <laughs> the TV show. <laughs> I guess I do. So it's kind of weird to see such a likable character as this kind of sadistic warden. Mm-hmm. Um, the 2005 remake, of course, like I said, it has Adam Sandler in it. Uh, Chris Rock is in it. Burt Reynolds is in it. And it they kind of toned down. He's in jail more for the, you know, he's in jail for, for you know stealing a car and all that. But they really toned down the kind of sexist woman abuse at the beginning of the movie. Uh-huh. There, it, well, it's not right. in the two thousand and five. Yeah. Um, the character of caretaker that is portrayed by Chris Rock in the two thousand and five, it's played by an actor named James Hampton. Adam. Uh, when we recorded this originally, you didn't know who that was. Yeah. Do you want me to act like I still don't, or do you want me to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Adam, do you know who James Hampton is? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I don't know, actually. Uh, you may know him as the dad in Teen Wolf. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. It's <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> he also That's plays, awesome. uh, he also has a small role in Sling Blade. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning of Sling Blade. He does. Just a couple of, he's done tons of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. There's also uh, a character played in, in in the 2005 remake, uh, played by the great Kali, the wrestler, the great Kali, uh, named Turley. <laughs> now, in the original with Burt Reynolds, there was a character similar to that named Samson that was played by Richard Keel. Ah, was Jaws jo- I can Moon see Maker. that. Same yeah. jawline, kind of. And then the, um, yeah, there's tons of, like, football, wrestling. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of cameos in the 2005. Bill Goldberg's in it. Mm-hmm. Steve Austin is in it. Nelly is in it. Michael Irving. Bill Romanowski. Tracy Morgan. The Tracy Morgan character in the 2005 is kind of a an amalgamation of uh, like three or four characters from the original. Really? Yeah. Huh. So, so yeah. I mean, that's a fun. I mean, I would if you want to laugh more, watch the 2005 remake. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna watch that, then you kind of owe it to yourself to watch the original Longest Yard. I should with see Burt that. Reynolds. I should see that because the end of the movie is almost shot for shot. Really? There's a lot of differences in the two movies. Uh, as far I mean, it's the base, same basic plot, but a, a lot of what happens is different in the movies. But the end of the movie is almost shot for shot, exactly the same. So I have cool. a uh, back in you know when this movie first came out in 05, I was very very. Anti Adam Sandler? No, no, no. Large and in charge. I had a different diet and different way of life back then. <laughs> and so I have, I, sometimes I have weird food memories. It shows the inner fat kid still inside of me. I remember the first time I saw this, I was at a friend's house. Our friend Adam Buttry from Buttry Design that oh, does yeah, yeah. great art. Yeah. Buttry.design. Check it out. I'm over at his house watching The Longest Yard. And I remember, this is going to impress you here. I went to McDonald's. This is when they still had their, their extra large size. Uh, I got a double quarter pounder meal with an extra large fry and a soda. And two McChickens on the side. Holy crap. That's what I was putting down as I was watching The Longest Yard. I'll never forget it. It was delicious. How many calories do you think that was? That's probably close to 2,000. It was probably more than 2,000. I think the meal itself was, what, 1,200, 1,300? Those yeah. extra McChickens on there, probably close to two. Oh, you had like a <laughs> like a whole day's worth of calorie intake. During that one movie. What else did you have that day? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So when I think of that movie, I have memories in, in his living room floor just killing this food. Wow. Just annihilating it. That's what I used to do. Wow. We both... We I are, have gluttonous memories. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> we had our days. But I never like... Well, unless I was with you yeah. and we were like trying to push ourselves. <laughs> trying to push ourselves. I don't have memories of just... Just doing that? Just doing that. Really? Yeah. I do. Clear, clear now, ones. with you, I have plenty of memories. Am I like your bad food influence? Well, you and a number of other people <laughs> who apparently have a uh, better metabolism than I do. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> or maybe it was just the age difference. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can remember like seeing how much we could scarf oh, yeah. down. Oh yeah, how many burritos we could eat. Oh yeah. But I don't. I, I don't like when I'm just you know like when I was single and just off by myself. Mm. I never did that. Really? I never went and got like a three days worth of food and oh, ate it once. Totally did. I would go do a lot of crazy things at fast food yeah, places. Well, you might need counseling. <laughs> uh, sticking with that, though. Yes. Uh, when I think of mid-90s Adam, what, what encapsulates my soul, what I think of my, my life back then, I had three major things I would do. Not including video games. That's a given. Eat. Besides, well, I would eat as well. <laughs> I would, I would uh, ingest as much wrestling, pro wrestling as I could. Uh-huh. I would also take in a lot of football, all while watching... Adam Sandler movies. So why not combine all three of those for The Water Boy? You can do it! It's a fantastic movie. Great comedy. 
Henry Winkler, so? Winkler is great in that yes, movie. Yes, Feruza Balk is fantastic. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. And you know who else is good? Who's that? Jerry Reed. Oh, yeah. He's the coach. He, yeah, He's yeah. the opposing coach. Yeah, Kathy Bates, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I watched so, Rat Race the other day. Oh, again. I love Rat Race. She's good in that. Yeah. You want to buy a squirrel? <laughs> but you're a fan of the Water Boy, right? Oh, I love the Water Boy. It's fantastic. He's a huge fan of pro wrestling. Uh, kind of goes on to the small, almost community college in Louisville. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, Louisiana. <laughs> and uh, his mom thinks football is for the devil. The foosball is for the devil. And he is a great football player coached by uh, the Fonzie himself. Uh-huh. And Colonel Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> Mandula Magada. <laughs> Never forget it. <laughs> great great scenes in the movie. Great comedy scenes. You're going to play the foosball. <laughs> Um, that may be the beginning of the end for Adam Sandler's funny. Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, think I mean, so? in your opinion, maybe. But yeah. I know Waterboy was just right in the middle of him being one of the most bankable actors yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. There was a period where now it's it's kind of, you know, 10 years later or 15 years later, you, you, you know, it's movies like it's Pixels or it's stuff on Netflix that you don't watch. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Somebody's watching it because one of his movies uh, yes. is like one of the most watched movies of really? 2016 on oh, Netflix. Wow. But um, whatever that the one he did with with uh, David Spade. It was some kind of westernish. And I Kevin, saw like a, a, a mock western movie on there too. Oh, Ridiculous Six. Oh, yeah. I think it was the spy one. Oh, okay. But Ridiculous Six apparently did pretty well really? too. Really? Wow. But what, when Waterboy came out, I mean, he was huge at the box office. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, mo- that was right in the middle of his box office bankability. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I want to say, like, I think even 50 First Dates did really well. Yeah. But the one from where he gets the remote control. From click. Click. Mm-hmm. That was the beginning. I think so. Mm-hmm. That one didn't perform like it was supposed to. that happened. slowly. Uh, bedtime stories happened. Uh-huh. Uh, Spanglish. Spanglish happened. Yeah. Of course, uh, Punch Drunk Love was kind of, I mean, it wasn't a comedy at all. No, it was, and it, was, it didn't get it really get a wide theatrical release. That was just him doing his yeah. independent thing, mm-hmm. which I love that movie. Yeah, it was good. Punch Drunk Love is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, The Water Boy. Did you ever see The Cobbler? The Cobbler. Did yeah. you ever see that? Check, it's on Netflix. Check that out. It's terrible. Is it bad? It's an Adam Sandler movie, The Cobbler. See, now you say it's an Adam Sandler movie. It's like you know it's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, but back but, then, if you said that, it, that's what it meant Billy Madison. Yeah, Happy Billy Gilmore. Madison, Happy Gilmore. Waterboy. Yeah. Even the, I'll, I'll stand up for little Nicky. I love little Nicky. Uh, the Wedding Singer. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The Wedding Singer may be one of my favorite movies of the 90s. Yeah, it's a good one. I could watch that movie anytime. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because now here we are, that was what, 95? Yeah. And we're in 2017? Yeah. So we're 22 years there was only supposed. There was only ten years right. difference in 1985 and 1995 when yeah. they made that movie. So it's like having a 2007 movie right now. Exactly. They're, it would be like having a movie. Hey, remember how qu- crazy it was back in 2007? Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, when we had flip phones. Before I forget, though, uh, my wife and I in the past two weeks have been almost religiously every night watching Rock of Love on Hulu. Is it good? You know, you, you ever oh, watch? <laughs> I was thinking Rock of Ages, like no, no, no. the like the the, no, no. the rock and roll musical. No, no, no rock, you, rock of Love, the, the, the Brett, Brett Michaels, Michaels uh, celebrity love show. Oh, I, that show was terrible. <laughs> I interviewed the winner of season one on the radio. Really? Yeah. Don't tell because I'm I'm going to find out who it is. We've Which, watched it before ten years ago, but we have no. Re- we both watched it, but I have no recollection of. The, the the characters are memorable, yeah. but I don't know who wins at all. So it's watching it again for the first time. Let me tell you what's really hard. What's is that? to conduct an interview with someone whose yeah. only thing is they want a reality show. Yeah, that's tough. So when you were a kid, did you aspire to hook up with Brett Michaels? <laughs> but it is crazy. I mean, he'll yeah. just make out with some girl and, and right next to him do it for the next one. It's then his crazy. diabetes kicks yeah, in. Yeah, it's crazy. They got to rush him to the emergency room. Yeah, but uh, yeah, from 2007, some then rock he has of heart love. surgery. <laughs> Then he gets bopped in the head by. That's what it oh, was. Yeah. He was performing one of the songs from Rock of Ages. Mm-hmm. Wow, those two are actually tied Weird. on the Tonys. Yeah, and then when they were bringing the set down, it popped him in the head. Ooh, yeah. the, old, the old unskinny bop, huh? Yeah, unskinny yeah. bop. Uh, uh, so I have Water Boy. What else do you have for football movies? Um, nothing. That I'm going to go into great detail about, yeah. but just other other movies that I've seen that uh, I think are worth a watch. Um. Necessary Roughness. Oh, yeah. With Scott Bakula. It had that uh, Major League feel to it. Kathy Ireland. Yeah. Um, is Fred Thompson in that movie? I don't know. Or did sure. I just pull another Brendan Fraser? <laughs> you pulled the old, you just Bill fingered that one, right? Yeah, I did. Up, right up on oh, it. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, the Replacements. Yes. With Keanu yeah. Reeves uh-huh. and Gene Hackman. Right. It's a pretty fun movie. Yeah. It's loosely based on what happened with the actual Washington Redskins. 
during the 1987 NFL strike. Yeah. Yeah, where they brought in like replacement quarterback who was probably better than their actual quarterback. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Remember the one year the actual NFL refs went on a strike? And that whole it was season, just a couple of years ago, that right? It was mass chaos. It was great. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was so fun like, to watch. I remember watching the guys on Monday Night Football, <laughs> like during halftime, and they they were just just furious. <laughs> yeah. That this is this is mockery. This yeah. is mockery of the game. Yeah. It's pretty good. This is worse than the XFL. <laughs> oh. Uh, soon. I also have any given Sunday, which is or, another oh, yeah. pretty serious. But it doesn't have an NFL license. That's true. Yeah, it's hard nowadays for a movie to get mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah, but Concussion does. Oh, it does okay. the Will Smith movie from last uh-huh. year because you can't deny that that w- that involved the NFL. Yeah, so they're able to reference the NFL, even though I, I think they would want to fight that because it's almost a negative light on the organization itself. Mm-hmm. You think they would try to fight that? But I guess they didn't. Yeah. Hmm. So, any other recommendations? That's pretty much about it. There's one called Draft Day with Kevin Costner. I want to see, but never have. It just doesn't seem interesting, does it's it? It's about a commissioner on draft day. <laughs> yeah, that just seems boring. I'm, I've always been intrigued that by just, the, the behind-the-scenes workings of it. That just seems like a sub-story of an NFL video game. That's <laughs> true. Um, I don't know. We didn't talk about Gridiron Gang with The Rock. Got a little, oh, yeah. yeah that was one. one of the movies that kind of started putting him on right. the path that he's on now. He still had hair there. He did still have Not hair. so muscled. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all I have, really. Those, those are the ones. Uh, if you were going to recommend one, mm-hmm. like one fun football movie to yeah. watch on Super Bowl Sunday yeah. rather than actually watch the Super Bowl, what would it be? Uh, I can't say Little Giants. That's fun, but I don't think most people would like that. I guess The Water Boy? I'm going with The Water Boy, too. Yeah, I guess The Water Boy. If you want, if you want to kill a couple of hours <laughs> on Sunday. I mean, it's, a, it's worth a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to watch a more serious football movie, if you want to cry, yeah. watch We Are Marshall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. If you want to cry on Super Bowl Sunday right. and watch a Super Bowl movie, yeah. watch We Are Marshall. Even Remember the Titans is kind of a tearjerker. I don't remember. Yeah, with oh, Denzel. Uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. So good in that movie. Mm-hmm. He's just good in everything. King Kong is good. Have shit you on. ever seen a movie he's in that he wasn't good in? No. I it's always know. the same actor, the same character, but I love it. I'm not bashing when I say that. Uh, well, the it's the same character. The intensity level is different. Just give me like a British accent once, Denzel. Come on, give like, me one. Give me a Southern twang, Denzel. The glory. Does it, I never saw that. Was yeah. It? yeah. Okay. That glory. makes sense. He needs a Southern accent for that. Yeah. Uh, so watch. Uh, his intensity level in Philadelphia is different <laughs> than his intensity yeah. level in Training Day. Yeah, I guess so. so. It's close to all that. It's that high intensity, though. He always has that. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm a coach getting yelled at when I'm watching his movie. He does have a fantastic delivery for long chunks of dialogue. Uh, yeah, like when he gets in that Denzel rhythm. Yeah, and you just like oh, I could watch him. <laughs> like I could honestly watch Denzel Washington read the phone book if those still exist. Yeah, and you know be entertained by it. I had a geometry teacher in high school that swore on everything he owned and lived for that Denzel Washington was the only human being in the face of the earth. This face was totally symmetrical and side by side. You put a line right down the middle, and everything was symmetrical. That's what he said. I disagree with that. You think so? It's Max Headroom from the 80s. Ah, that makes sense because he's fake. What? Kind of. Whoa. (laughs) No. No. That's a good list of football movies for you. So there you go. Enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. Don't drink and drive. Especially if you, well, if you're using those Tostitos bags, right? That's they tell true. You. That's true. Don't be a uh, Falcons fan because you want to drink after that. Because they're going to get so badly. <laughs> Just root for Brady, the All American Brady. And on Super Bowl Sunday, a couple of things to look for. The commercials are always popular. Oh yeah. Uh, Snickers is actually doing a live. You can actually go now to Snickers website and see a live stream from the set of the live commercial they're going to do on Super Bowl Sunday. That is awesome. And Spuds McKenzie will make his return. What? You can already see the return, like. Bud Light's already released it. Like his grand grandson, or no? What? It's the ghost of Spuds McKenzie. Oh man! And it's fantastic. Really? Yeah. It's, <laughs> this could be. I might. I might make a prediction now that that Spuds McKenzie yeah. may be everyone's favorite. You think so? Super Bowl commercial. I don't know if a lot of people it's, know that though. Yeah, you don't have to because they kind of <laughs> they kind of tell you who he is. Okay. In the commercial, because I'm 32 and I'm, I have va- like vague memories of him. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, hey, who are you? I'm the ghost of Spuds McKenzie. I yeah. was a big deal back in the 80s. <laughs> and then it kind of goes into this whole uh, Christmas Carol thing. Really? Oh, where the wow. guy's missing out on his friends because he won't buy the beer. Basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have you seen the Bud Light commercial of the immigrants and all that, the immigration? Uh, the anti-Trump commercial yeah, that, that they was... say isn't an anti-Trump. Right, right, right. That's pretty crazy. Yep. Hmm. So, well, let us know. Did we miss any football movies? Yeah. I know one that we missed. What's that? That we're going to hear about. Oh, yeah. But it's... Football movies for people that don't like football. Remember right. that? These are, you know, right. fun times, usually. Uh-huh. Well, last time, last Super Bowl prediction. Give it to me. If you had a full score, give me the actual score of the game. Actual score of the yeah. game. Yeah. I say 
the Atlanta Falcons, well, Tom Brady's going to score 21 points yeah. at least. He's going to at least get three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty it's much. given. That's a given. normal day he wakes up and does that. So I'm saying by 10, 31-21. Wow. Okay. I think Falcons win by a field goal and a touchdown. Wow. Yeah, say 30, I'm going to say 31 31- 14 Patriots. Oh, no. There's no way the Patriots are going to hold them to two. It's the Atlanta. When will the Atlanta Falcons ever make it back to the Super Bowl? <laughs> we'll see. Hey, the Titans, man. I've and seen a you, Titan Super Bowl myself. I've seen it. All I'm saying I've is. I've seen it happen. I punched I'm, a tree afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Re, the, the Falcons' performance in the playoffs. Yeah, true. Did you see that coming? I said no. It, no. it happened, though. So They're pretty driven. 31-14. Here we go. I'm saying 31-21 <laughs> Falcons. I think we'll see what happens. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, join us Tuesday. It's not about football. No. So if you're like, man, I used to like Adam and JP, but now they're talking about politics freaking and football. football. Uh, uh, we're uh, back Tuesday, back to our roots. Yeah. It's going to be Star Trek. Star Trek Revisited. Bam. Season premieres. Do it. So we have, uh, should we say which ones we're watching? Sure. If, if you want to watch yeah, these. watch beforehand and come talk to us about it. Uh, the, the, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, we've already watched these, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about the original Star Trek. Like Star Trek, the original series, season two, episode one, called A Monk Time. Watch that. And then Star Trek, the next generation, the end of season three, like the epi- last episode of season three, and the first episode of season four, the best of both worlds. Go watch those three episodes and then join us Tuesday. We're going to talk about them. That's on Netflix, Hulu. You can find those episodes everywhere if you want. And a whole casserole of subjects ah, on Tuesday show. That is true. Mm-hmm. I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. This is the Adam and JP show. Face Sealer. This has been a production of the Adam and JP family of On Demand Talk Radio. Adam and JP. Right now. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at ESONetwork.com.